I'm very much against the entire construct and the relationship that hip hop has with the Illuminati. That shit's fucking stupid. I think that shit needs to be deaded. <laughs> if you have that type of mentality, you don't know what the Illum Illuminati originally, like the word, the original group that came from Belgium, like that group, like has nothing to do with hip hop and the bigger overall broader group that like is talked about, the people who are in control of the world, like the true 0.5 of the 1%, you know what I'm yeah. saying, that has a, what the fuck do you think they give, you Why think they care about Jay-Z? Right. You think they care about like the things that we say in our culture? Well, Jay-Z nah. did say like, you think they let a nigga in? Nigga. Right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> True story. Straight up. I mean, what? like they, they, they definitely kind of have a couple sense. niggas in that because there's some motherfuckers who have influence and money everywhere. But not no there's rap entire nigga, con No, no <laughs> rap <nigga>. Like <laughs> some African rap. warlord somewhere. Yeah, that nigga yeah, got some that, cool. That, you that know what I'm saying? That entire country? <laughs> exactly. Oh, him. Resources? Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, that nigga. But like, nah, no. So there's no, what you're <laughs> no. saying is Illuminati is <laughs> not having an influence in hip hop. I did not say that. They clearly have an influence because like even Machiavelli came out, but they shouldn't and it should be deaded. The, the correlation is a, it's a red herring. Motherfuckers is out here looking for something that should not be there because that's not what we need to be focused on. Right. We need to be focused it, on, it like if you want to focus on a rapper doing something crazy, talk about him doing something crazy and positive, like Rick Ross being like, buy back the block. Why can't we focus on that? You know what I'm saying? Why can't we take all the... Our attention is focused on entirely different things, and we need to stop focusing on the wrong things so we can build ourselves up. YG is way more positive than there I thought is. he was. That's true. He does a lot of... But that's not, but that's not, yeah. really? that's not where the VPs of these companies are focusing on. You no, know? they're focusing and on... They're, like, they're having these meetings, too. They're yeah. like, why are we focused on, on buying the block back? No, let's yeah. find another yachty. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Exactly. This is pointless. We don't care about that. <laughs> they can do what they want to do. <laughs> they can have that. Right. They can have their... They can have their turkey drives in November and, you know, I can... Walk a flock and give out, you know, ten thousand targets. We don't care about that. You know, that's Drive their personal. I didn't, I didn't. I understand that as well. But like, turkey drives are like, yo, <laughs> nigga. What about March, April, May, June, right. and July when niggas are starving, fam? I thought about that. One like, fuck too. up, showing up to the hood, handing out turkeys during Christmas. How about you specifically buy, open up, or pay for more food shelters? Overall, right, right, you're out. Right. A lot are a lot are doing it, man. It's just not being noticed. <laughs> I mean, it's not it. take. I mean, even Nipsey, you know, he owns half a Crenshaw. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like he a bunch of those stories, and then put in a, a new shop. Yeah. You know, but I, straight up because of the you don't hear about that outside of LA. You don't hear. You yeah, know, it doesn't yeah. get any play. But it doesn't. Know? It doesn't necessarily need to. If he is talking to the other people in the industry in their cities, having them do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people may not want to go to a Nipsey-owned store because it's Nipsey. You know right. what I mean? No, I don't follow. So if you have individuals who come from a broken, shattered, or a little bit dusty past, right. and they're trying to change their idea, they're trying to do things to benefit other people, but you have someone who doesn't like where they came from, they might not associate with that specifically for that reason. Same type of thing where Nordstrom wanted to get rid of Ivanka Trunk's clothes because her last name is Trump. Not because of anything she had to do, but because all of the, you know, centralist or liberal individuals in America are so off of her daddy that they don't want to buy anything from her that might hurt Nordstrom, so they take it out of their store. If you go to this particular um, this particular store, whatever it is, and you know it's owned by Nipsey, let's say you're a blood or you do anything that's not related to Crips or not related to somebody who you know when they were younger were doing bad things and you don't want to put money in their pocket, even though it's benefiting the entire community, you don't want to do that because you have an issue with that individual. That's why they might not put their name on it. Uh, I, would, I, don't think, I don't think that black people as a whole would not want to support something like that. I don't think it. I don't think it's that deep in that regard. I think there is merit to the idea of like not wanting to associate with it, but we can't say that like an artist like that is the fact that they're keeping that store in Crenshaw versus going to Fairfax, right? Mm -hmm. And like joining all the hype beasts yeah, among right. Fairfax and Melrose, which he could have easily done and probably made more money right. going there than where he stayed, right? True. So I think. I think there's some merit in, in terms of saying like, okay, we want to keep it in the hood, yeah. and this and that, and it's it's not take away from like any sort of negative gang banging culture, but I wouldn't go as far as to say that like there are enough people who would say I'm not fucking with you to impact it in a negative way. Um, obviously, we have issues with perpetuating these these things, right? 
And sometimes it can be destructive. But I think, I think it's dangerous to say that someone wouldn't support it because of that. Because like, I'm saying that there might be individuals who might. I'm not saying us as an entire people won't. Like mm-hmm. the fact we were glorifying the fact that he stays where he's at and is right. trying to, to build out that area by putting money into it. But there still might be people who wouldn't go to a particular source simply because it had his name. If not him, then whoever it might be. So like right. just because he owns a lot of stuff, not all of them have to say Nipsey on the front. That's right. what I'm saying. But then we're there and I'm thinking like, where's all the media? Like he doesn't just own this clothing store. He owns the fat burger like next to it. Yeah. Rick Ross owns the wing stop no, next yeah. to the fat burger. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you know, all these areas, I'm like, you know, where's the media? Like we have bloggers out here all day, but media is right media. here. You want to go to <laughs> we're we're yeah. we do a live, live show? Live exactly. Live. <laughs> hey, we need to be live. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come through. Right. <laughs> okay, so you were talking. We didn't. I don't want to give. We're not going to give Alex Jones any credit because I, to be fair, I watched his Katie Kirk interview mm-hmm. where they were trying to portray him as a, a crazy person. <laughs> now, it was it was good. No, it was good journalism, right? I watched it. I'm like, Danny really went in on him. Yeah. Right? Showing how crazy he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, do you think people would have fucked with Prodigy if they knew he was calling in on the show? to discuss conspiracy theories. Yeah, because he always talked about conspiracy theories. Like, Prodigy yeah. as an individual, I think that after that did, is a part of him. After I did the research, mm-hmm. that was, like, permeated his whole His career. whole thing. Yeah, so, like, that's been him. UFOs. It makes, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That makes right. sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. that relationship yeah. is not all that surprising. After I did, at first, like, on paper, I was like, oh, that's weird. And then I did, like, five minutes of research. Like, oh, yeah, no. Prodigy. Now, Joe, Pope would have called in. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. I would be. <laughs> yeah. I would be. Yeah. 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 I'd be yeah. closet right. somewhere like, oh my God. No. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, so it is real. I take back everything <laughs> right. I said when we were on there. It has to be wrong. Right. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I guess, where's the application at? Guys? Right. Right. <laughs> I need to sign up, I guess. I don't know. So that wouldn't have <laughs> As long as they don't check your credit? No. You guys, you guys talking about Kodak Black earlier and his statement about not dating black women. Will that destroy his career? No. No. He won't destroy his career. No. I mean, he'll destroy his career. But it's that, just, it's a testament of him being determined to do it. Right? Yeah, right. It's just, you know, that's that's the first step in several of destroying his career. Right. What makes that first? It's just, it's. I feel like it's too polarizing of a thing. It's like, why even say, even if he feels that way, what's the point of making that statement? So he knows it's where you stand. Right, right. I will, Get out my DMs. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Backstage. Yeah, the answer is no. Right. Even, right. Even his Instagram was flooded with by too many black girls. Too many black girls, man. I'm trying to get these international women. Right. Look, Quisha, no. Fuck it. I'm not interested. Oh, my God. Because now he's going out touring and getting exposed to right. things outside of the hood. So he's right. like, oh, man, I need one of those. You, right. right. He's like, yo, I'm off the 17%. I'm trying to get to this other, you know what I'm saying, 83. What's good? So we saw that uh, French Montana had a similar incident. Did you guys hear about that? A lot of people have. So. It, it doesn't hurt you. How many people have gone on Twitter and just been like, there's cats who throw that in their bios, fam. It's like, nah, no melanin allowed. Like, what? What? Yeah, That's for sure. crazy town. Man. I don't. I, I, just I don't feel like it. casual racism is becoming very acceptable. You're, <laughs> bruh. Yeah. yeah. That's a little scary. Like, Damn. it's funny, but like, I don't know if I like that. You're right, because when you said that, I thought about the Bill Murray incident, right? Where yeah. you said the the, the fielding comment, yeah, mm-hmm. which I laughed at. I, did, I thought that I was like, this is cool. What if? Right. I ain't got a problem right. with it. Right. It's just, Bill Maher saying is that he been rapping for a minute. He's been so down he's, for so long. <laughs> it's just like straight up. I'm surprised he didn't slip before. You know, yeah. like, he been smokes down. L's with Killer Mike <laughs> weekly on his show, fam. <laughs> I don't know, man. I still have these moments where like. I see one of my friends who is not black just casually say, nigga, oh, my nigga this, my nigga that. Yeah. Uh, that annoys me. And whenever I see a non-black female with a, a meme with the word nigga in it. It's crazy. I want to come for her so bad. So bad. Just because you fucking a black guy at some yeah. point in your life. Right. Doesn't mean you can just let the inbound little, rip that on that the internet. That's me. true. It pisses me off. That's you know? true. But it's, it's, it's not to like give me an additional power to the word but still I think that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that I think it depends nigga memes being a little frustrating yeah, yeah. That pisses me off. but Come I on, think Becky. all that's part of the culture that's helping fix racism I feel like in America what like it's, it's helping it fix because they're like well, this, is, this is a new idea yeah, this is like, a very new idea and like I said well, like it's, I mean, it's comedy <laughs> heals a lot so if it if if a lot, of these, a lot of these a lot of these the a lot of examples we're using are are usually in like a satirical you know, right. uh, environment. 
it's it's done to be funny, and we laughed. So I, I guess there could be merit there. What were you gonna say? I'm cut you off. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this this little point could take like an hour. So <laughs> I'm trying to wrap this one up. You guys can chime in, but um, I hear that a lot. I hear the N word being used, and you know, obviously songs. So then we're in a let's say last night we're in the Staples Center. Somebody's rapping about nigga. Everybody's saying it. I'm looking to my right. Three Hispanic girls are saying nigga. <laughs> to my left, you know, but it's and they're looking at me, and I'm just like, ah, yeah, like we're both just like, right, yeah, like you know. But I feel like that's kind of fixing. It's kind of not fixing it, but it's kind of tightening it up a little bit. Is you it know? or is it just making them feel comfortable about saying the word? It's not. not I don't think it's even else. the word. They want to. They want to be with our culture. Like they want to know. The like word. they want to know you. They're yeah. scared of you. But it's like if you guys are in a function or something like that, and you guys are kind of vibing. Yeah. It's like oh, like yeah, like it's my guy. Like you know, that's my nigga. It's my <laughs> nigga. Like they won't say that to you. But it's like when they go home, like damn, I do have a black friend. Like or I, I did meet somebody black, and he was cool. Like so maybe this guy is cool. Maybe right. this guy is cool. You know what I mean? So it's it's kind of like it's just the culture, you know, and we influence everything. So we're just it's just. It's a weird way to kind of tighten tighten us up a little bit. Nigga would be a gateway to equality. That is <laughs> everybody just well, being. And it's not even that. I think I think it's I think nigga it's might ra- just be like the new you know blonde braids for girls. This might right. be the new way for right now, but they might not. Just because, like you said, just because you fucking a nigga don't mean that you really down. You know what I'm saying? True. You just got you face down for the moment. That's all that means. You know what I'm right. saying? Oh like you're still gonna go and get you. You know what I'm saying? Like Ultimately, uh, I think intentions are what like as long as it's not coming from like. A angry, hateful place. Right. Yeah. You can usually tell that. You know right. what I'm saying? It's really easy to tell if somebody means it in a hateful way or if it's like a, I don't know, I, I just want to be down kind of way. Right. You know, okay. Does that make it right? I, I would cut it. I would, I would if the intentions are good to me, it does. So sure. I've always right. been like a, if you say nigga and then immediately look at me, then you can't say nigga. Right. I need you to own it. <laughs> like, you know what I'm like, saying? Just like, own straight it. up. You can't just be like, <laughs> if you own oh, it. damn. What's up, my nigga? And like, look, is that. Okay. No, no, no. You because keep, you asked me, right, you should keep talking. Okay. Keep talking. <laughs> if you keep talking, <laughs> respect. Keep right. saying it. If you look at me like, nah, 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 never again. And you don't feel Everybody good about it. Then whisp- <laughs> <laughs> right? Straight up. What gets to me is when, when I'll hear someone say the N word, and then if I if I ever like give them a glimpse of like any sort of like racial issue, and they're unaware of it, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, well, we gotta have a little sit down. Yeah, straight up. Right. You, know, you can't just appropriate like, the word. You gotta know. Right. You gotta yeah. know the struggle. How they don't the nigga want, came to be. Right? They don't want. <laughs> they don't want to know all that. They nah. want to skip past all that right. and just go to nigga when I hear it on the song right. and be able to say it I next to my black friend. And get right to yeah, all right. right. They don't want to <laughs> dig back. Yeah. yeah. Nah, you gotta know all of the niggers that came before the niggers. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You gotta know the hard er straight up before you get to the a. Right. Complete difference. Right. Right. That's because I feel like. That's a, that's a big part of it too like if you don't understand the difference then you definitely can't use the word because the difference Fact. is so big it's a huge i have fought difference. i have actually fought multiple friends who have called me a nigger especially if they was mixed like if you buy like your mama was white and you'd be like you ain't nothing but a dirty nigger we got we got problems fam like i remember the first time i went to school and one of my homies called me a coon i was like yo my family's all from the south like i grew up in like that word is not we we haven't yet learned to play with that word. I don't word think that in the one, same, that's one of those. Yeah, it's like, just never going like to be cool. wait a minute, <laughs> time out. Like, we need to have a conversation because I ain't no goddamn coon. <laughs> to, be, <laughs> to be cool is an invitation for fisticuffs. That's just oh, how I see sure. that. Like, oh, so you wanted to fight. You should have just said so. Oh, you should have just said so. <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> we can box. That's what you want to do. <laughs> sure. But I do hear a lot more kids, and like my friends too, like a lot of people using coon in the same like, true. Ah, this, this is my homie over here. You know what I'm saying? Hey, why are you cooning right now? You know what I'm saying? Like, shit like that. As a, oh, it's, man. it's not okay. That is something. That I haven't heard I'm that one yet. That, that'll that'll be a new one. It's, it's, it's a much younger thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's but it's, it's happening. Ooh, wow. Nope. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's... Right? I'm like, yo, man, let me talk to you for a minute. Right. Hold on. <laughs> right. Hold on. Yeah, that's a little, yeah. yeah. I don't think you understand the Every... amount of self control I'm using right now just to be speaking to you and not hitting you. So we need to talk. Everybody listening to the podcast, do not run up on any of us calling us coon. Right. right. Yeah. This is the hey, forewarning of the disclaimer. Disclaimer. Right. 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 So, well, okay. So then I for, will catch a case. There will be some people who don't know the difference between the hard ER or the coon. Mm-hmm. Summarize it for us. Um, my, uh, my great grandmother was the first one in our family that wasn't a slave. Right? So Her how many, mama how many was years a nigger. ago was that, do you think? She was born in 1913. She okay. passed in 2007. Okay. Which sucks because mm-hmm. it was like 
she passed like I want to say two. Mm, she passed within twelve months of Obama being elected. I was like, and she actually marched with MLK. That would have been a great, you know, what I'm right. saying like that's sunrise and sunset. Full circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wait, for context, the same person who was marching for civil rights mm-hmm. was killed for fighting for civil rights. Yeah, lived through. Two Jim world Crow, wars, mm-hmm. two world wars, <laughs> restoration, all of that. Right. Yep. She, te- in theory, she could have still been alive. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So she lived through that. So that pain that she felt on both ends mm-hmm. was real for her. Right. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So that is that is the difference. That's. I think that's the difference. She mm-hmm. she didn't let any of us. First off, we said that we couldn't cuss in front of her anyway. But never oh, yeah. would anybody sure. say the N word oh, in front yeah. of her. That's not happening. She would, bruh, switches would come out of everywhere with a quickness. That's the, grandma's house for me too. <laughs> one mm-hmm. of the things I think is is, <laughs> is 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 an easy explanation or a description is when I go talk to my uncles and like my grandparents and stuff like that, and they're talking to each other. They they'll still use nigga, but they only use nigga in a way when they're talking about another black person that has done them wrong in some type of way. They'll be like, <laughs> some sort of a hooligan. man, <laughs> yeah. that nigga owe me money. You know what I'm saying? Or something like, that's the only right. time they'll yeah, use yeah, it. They yeah, won't yeah. sit there and be like, yeah. oh, this is me and my niggas. You know what I'm saying? They don't yeah, use yeah. it in that fashion. In a social context. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's still, it's still a difference for them. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So maybe like living through the pain, knowing the difference, knowing that you had to go from a Jim Crow to civil rights. You know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a, a period in which the ER was a description of all of us because we weren't able to drink from the same goddamn water fountain. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or look at white women for so long. That's where all that pain comes from in that ER. Yeah. That's like, the hard R. The hard, there's, a, there's a difference. There's, you can't be my friend and call me a nigger. Like, Thanks. nah. That doesn't, that don't work. Can I be your friend and well, call you the, my nigger? The, yes. The term you was are my friend if you call designed me my nigger. to like demean <laughs> initially. Mm-hmm. So... I, you know, we, as a people, flipped it at some point, but its its origin, like its design, was to be demeaning. So if you don't understand that, you should. And it's not us. Just oh, not say it. And it's not us. It's our OGs that were saying it. You know, yeah. sixties and seventies. They were. They started. They flipped, yeah. You totally, know. Totally. Kind of kept it going. And we kind of brought it to like the mainstream on on records and yeah. concerts. We're shouting it out. <laughs> you know. So it's. True. Kind of got glorified a little bit. Strictly my for my niggas is the name of an album. Niggas with attitude is the name of a group. Right. Like you're saying, there was a there was a time period with cats who are in their you know late forties now. Definitely put that on wax as a we are taking this for us. I think we'll call this section strictly for my end bombs. There we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, for the end. That way everybody else can use it. Hey, did you hear? Did you hear in podcast one hundred and one <laughs> the strictly for my end bomb section? Is that right? Can I say in bomb? Is that okay? Some kid walked to his teacher. What's up, my bomb? I'm like, oh, hey, hold up. Wait a minute. It's funny. I was with my homegirl the other day, and she goes, um, "Yeah, I don't say the n word. I say neighbors now." I was like, "Okay, we'll start Close using that. Neighbor, These right? are my neighbors." All right. <laughs> I kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "That's a new one. That's, that's a new one. I'll take it. I'll friendly. take it. I like, I like it." it. <laughs> All right. In like 30 minutes, it's going to be a sweat box in here. All right, let's go. I'm just making it. I'm just guessing that's the case. We've never actually done it, but. Oh, man. Small room. Small room. Several people. Highlights. Like the way I see it. Right? I wrote a a theorem. Not even a theory. A full theorem. You know what I'm saying? Math and everything. More than three people in a room, it gets hot exponentially. Let's, Let's test it. Or not, because we have one, I mean, two, three, five. four, five, seven bodies in this yeah. building. Yeah. We're almost at fire marshal capacity. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's almost It'll a wrap. Spontaneous flames <laughs> shortly. Right. Right. <laughs> this shit is not up to code. He's looking around. Right. <laughs> we got some baking soda in the in the control room just in case it pops off. <laughs> Spread it around. Oh, right. I learned something new today right now. The just put that right. out there. Baking soda versus fires. Learn something new. Exactly. I learned that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> the homie was like, hey, uh, if you don't want to get a fire extinguisher, get baking soda. And I was like, coincidentally, I have some right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why, but right, yeah. it's, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. I have some other things in red capsules. I got a pot and some pans, a little bit of fire, but I'm not telling right. you why I got all of it together. You know exactly. <laughs> Turn it to a certain degree, get a little whips. You know what I'm saying? I hey. was inspired by uh, all that Mob Deep I was bumping. Oh, Fam, exactly. They give you the recipes. <laughs> exactly. Okay. That was a fantastic segue. Thank you. <laughs> that, worked <laughs> segue. that worked out. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. But I, in that regard though i don't really remember mob deep rapping rapping too much about drugs 
right? more than after effects. You're right. Mm-hmm. It was more no. so just like gang life, period. Period. Yeah. The hustle. Yes. Right. As opposed to just like pure cocaine raps, like <laughs> like Pusha T. Or, uh, Pusha or T or is like the... He's one of my favorite cocaine rappers. He, he makes it yes. seem so like beautiful. Right. <laughs> so eloquent in the fact that this is how you do all of the things necessary in order to correctly and sophisticatedly sell drugs and then make millions off of the records of selling drugs. Facts. Facts. That's pretty dope. Album one and two. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's literally the blueprint. Straight up. So last week we lost Prodigy and through the through the course of like looking at that, uh, a lot of random shit popped up on my radar uh, about his passing and his life before, right? So I remember actually getting robbed by Prodigy. True story. Wow. Okay. No, I, mean, I told you that shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was about to be like, <laughs> what? What, what song is that? <laughs> <laughs> that shit did not happen. <laughs> so when did the infamous come out? Was that like 96, 97? I want to it say was in the I, 90s, right? I want to say 90s. Because 96, 95, 96 was Biggie and Pac. Pac, Pac, Pac era, yeah, so it was after, right that. after that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is. What was their debut album? It wasn't the, it wasn't the Infamous, right? No. Was it Hell on Earth? Their debut album came out in the 90s. Yeah. Right? Because I remember, I'm going to Google it. There I remember. Um, <laughs> right, right, there you go. Right. They had their beef Google. with Pac. Right? Yeah, that was short lived, but like only because he died. What do you mean? Like it was short lived, but it didn't get a chance to stay long. You think because, it would have continued? I mean, we don't know because Pac died in '96. Well, you know, I, Hove put him on the Summer Jam screen, right? Yeah, <laughs> but that was it. That was kind of the end of it. Didn't you know what? I wonder. I don't think it would have continued though. I think it would have no. been the end of it. Yeah. Pac didn't have very many long-standing beefs unless you physically assaulted him or True. you said something about somebody who assaulted him. Okay. Have you heard the Pac story of how he shot two undercover cops? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> that shit blew my mind when I heard it. I was like, whoa, how many people are out here actually like really living that life? Just about it. Just Ju- really fucking about it. Juvenile hell. Too scared now. I mean, yeah, I can yeah, yeah. probably swear to you. I've never been in jail for 13 years. No, you ever something heard like that? Something like that? Right. Okay, so well, that must be 1993. That. Was Juvenile Hell? Yes. And then Infamous was 95. Hell on Earth was 96. 96. Yeah, see, I only know okay. Infamous. Okay, right, because I was 10 yeah. years old when that shit came out. I was like, I was three. I remember discovering like Mob Deep after the fact in the same way that like, yeah, a lot ten. of old records kind of popped up but remember, not understanding like the the brevity of it, how important it was what were you gonna say no just i was had a, I was when i was i was 10 as well i got uh maybe i was 10 something like that i got ll cool j's mama said knock you out single cassette tape like my aunt bought it for me really? i don't even remember why i picked it out but we went to the like warehouse whatever the fucking record store was 100 years ago like sam goodies or something tape. yeah something like that <laughs> And I spent, I had it for 24 hours, right? Because, you know, there, I guess there's a clean side and there's the dirty side. And I guess my aunt didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember it was like 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. I was outside playing basketball with my giant Walkman and my old school wire headphones, like <laughs> two pieces of styrofoam. I was terrible at that time. But outside playing basketball, my aunt pulls up, <laughs> jumps out of the car. Opens up the Walkman, takes out my tape, hands me Will Smith Summertime. Ooh, of course. <laughs> That's what it always was. And drives off. Are you serious? I swear to God. That's crazy. That's the funniest shit ever. I'm wondering, like... That was an awesome story. That was like she was walking around the grocery store talking to one of her aunt friends and was like, girl, you bought him what? Right. You know on the backside of that, he says this and that and that. Like one of her church girl friends, she just jumped in the Oldsmobile, you know what I'm saying? Just like drove well to where you are. Give me that. Hopped out. <laughs> Summertime. What are you doing here? Willard doesn't cuss, so here you go. Right. right. <laughs> Fortunately, Summertime was a great song. So yes, sorry, yes, it was. <laughs> yes, definitely. Nas wrote for Will Smith. Did he? On his no. comeback album. Oh, okay. Which comeback? Little wow. known fact. Well, when they did the Wild Wild West soundtrack. Okay. Oh, Nas wow. went for that. Gotcha. Oh, yes. wow. That's why we haven't heard about it. Wild Wild West soundtrack. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Makes sense. Perfect sense. <laughs> so I had this yeah. I had this idea um, when I was thinking about how young Mob Deep 
was when they came out. They were like teenagers. When all the action right. started. Yeah. Right, right, young, right. Kids. Yeah. Right. Look back, you look, I was like, dang, they look so young. They look right. young. Like, right. 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 Two they children were like in children. high school, essentially, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. with the record deal, rapping about some of the like darkest shit you could imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which might be tame in today's standards, maybe not, at least in terms of like how graphic of a picture they paint it. Right. Right. And the storytelling. The storytelling, right. yes, mm-hmm. was so vivid. Now, I, I, I imagine like my parents probably not being smart enough to understand like the lyrics. If they hear the cuss word, they're like, oh my God, turn that shit off. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but beyond 100%. that, just not really getting it. And I thought about like the teenagers of the current generation. Right, so like little Yachty just turned twenty. Yeah, right. So he's nineteen mm-hmm. years old, and the impact on the culture is undeniable. Right. Right. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, what is the the parallel there? Because now that Prodigy's dead, people are. I want to say that like pop culture has kind of stopped, not just hip hop, mm-hmm. but I remember he made he made the cover of the New York Times. Right, right. Just revering his his death or his his life, saying that he forged the sound in hip hop. Now they didn't come out with like a smash debut. It was like by album three, yeah, when yeah. they got traction. Mm-hmm. Right, I didn't even know the radio album. play. Yeah, right, exactly. All over. Yeah. Now, Lil Yachty came out with his debut album, and they said it was a flop, numbers wise. Yeah, right. But there's no denying his impact on the culture. So I didn't want to like, it's an unfair comparison to compare the two, mm-hmm. but I still can't help but to support the young cats. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. I have, to, I have to support the kids when, when I feel like they, they resonate with the music. So I wonder, right? There's nothing like Mob Deep today, or is there? You would know better than I would. Something like a Mob Deep now? Yes. I feel like that particular lane of like gangster rap, not gangster rap, because it wasn't really that, like, Painting the picture of the hood on a daily basis of what goes on in and out, like kind of being like the news of what's going on in those particular streets right. has been, has kind of like changed. The people mm-hmm. who, who do that now, you, 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 would, you can get that now from like a Thugga or a Kodak Black or a Bobby Shmurda and not necessarily need the painting of the picture that like Mob Deep or Hove used to do. Where they would tell you, like when you listen to one of their records, or like a Ghetto Boys, or you know what I'm saying, like where you listen mm-hmm. to those type of records and you can close your eyes and know exactly what's going on word for word as they're painting that story. It's more like a, I'm gonna give you two bars of that in between me talking about, you know, popping Molly's, getting hair off of Zannies, and going to the right. club. You know what I'm saying? It's and just not, like breaking the whole, news alerts. Versus the whole bar like, of just ad libs, just ha, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Well, I think that circles yeah, back right. to the the listener's attention span being so short. Like your average listener doesn't take the time to see the picture even if it were painted damn but it depends right. on, it depends on who it is because like we were talking about it earlier um you now that i'm thinking about it you do get that from like a vince staples though you know what i mean true you can get that from like true. a big mensa but, or, see, these are, and they, but those are like your niche guys like they're they're not as big as a as a yachty or a or a, you know what i'm saying like they might not get as many records played on the radio but that i wouldn't consider them niche i would think that like yachty's one night when he first came out that was more niche to begin with because like the Vince Staples, the Vic Mensas, they get play, but right. not on the radio. Like what I'm saying, my right. generation doesn't like, listen to the radio. I feel right, like right. more people are aware of a Yachty than they are of a Vince Staples. How many people were aware of a Prodigy versus the other people that were coming out at the time? And then might not even be aware of Yachty is Yachty's style. Like, right. Yeah. That if they never you know seen what he looks like, it's crazy here, all that stuff. The style they know, like you know. Yeah. 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 Well, I feel like with someone like Yachty, his his image is almost bigger than the music because he had like the Sprite commercial. Well, he said right. his image is super important to him. I feel right. like yeah. I, I the one thing I have derived that is he's focused on. So, right. I mean, in that regard, he's doing well. He, his image is undeniable. You can't not notice him and his good branding. You know, people are following it. So I can't be mad at that. Okay, so did Mob Deep have an image at that time? <sighs> Because you, you could say that the, they were definitely painting a picture, but it was like a a horror story. Like they're known, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah they yeah, bordered like yeah. horrorcore, right? right? So like totally. the things that they said, were like really graphic. Yeah, right. Almost over the top, right? To an extent, like there's, the times, there's a yeah, way yeah, the early nineties, totally. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. So in the nineties, they're right. telling stuff like, "Oh my god, this is gruesome." 
Right. Yeah. Right. And we know it's depicted in a way that makes you visualize it, but it definitely crosses the border. Today, you might be tame, right? Yeah. So were they aware of that, do you think? I think they were. I think yeah. they were expressing they true were. stories. But I think that's yeah. the difference. Like, I think that, that I think Yachty's more concerned about his image like as a brand, and that includes music, but not limited to music. Whereas Mob Deep didn't really have an image outside of their music. Like, they looked right. like two dudes from New York to right. rap, you know what I'm saying? or from the East Coast to there rap. Was no, there was no thought was of, nothing. next year I'm going to be on a movie, or exactly. yeah, commercials, exactly. or yeah, there was no thought. Big-ass yeah. jackets, Tims, that was it. headbands, yeah. and fitted hats. Right. Like that's, that's what everybody was wearing. It wasn't right. really about that their visual right. image. It was about their music. Like it wasn't about, spo- about sponsorships. Right. And, yeah. yeah, that wasn't even really a thing yeah. as much yeah. as it is now. Like, I think that you, might be why. No one would ever think anybody raps getting a Sprite deal. Like That's not a thing back then. What? No. How many people at the time that weren't Pac or Will were rappers who were really getting like movie deals or shows or LL, you know what I'm saying, shows or movies at that time, you know what I'm saying? So like you're saying, maybe they didn't have to think about their image as much because they was like, yo, I'm rapping about what I'm really doing. I'm, I'm rapping about what's going on and when I'm done with that I'm riding those same streets bumping my own music right. but, but, like, but oh, two, it's good like, but two here's the thing they were forced to stay in that lifestyle stay in that because you had somebody like Pac who yeah. was always like from LA we didn't listen to Mob Deep because no. Pac said don't right. you know what I mean? <laughs> right. and he was always clowning them like these <laughs> these two little kids blah 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 one got this and one got that I'm like <laughs> man yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm like oh we can't even right. you know so when it when it finally made it to you know not even, when it finally made it to K-Day or 923 you know it was later after a couple you know uh, projects have been made you know yeah. so yeah. it was like they were yeah, forced to stay into that like, everybody at that time like you had to prove yourself yeah. you know yeah. somebody's gonna clown you out on album you know, um, so 100%. that's my man, but they stuck to it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I wonder if that had to do with why the pictures were painted so well, because it's almost like tunnel vision. Like they didn't have as many distractions as a modern day artist has. Like all you are focused on is, is making music. your music. Yeah, like, that's it. The paper. No, that's it. Yeah, there's no side deals or marketing stuff or any of that stuff. It's just these bars and you can't put out anything whack like exactly like, like pop, the competition pop, yeah. was so hot like and people will call you if you're just whack like right immediately you right. will know so you can't you can't put anything out that's bad so well nowadays okay so it's interesting because now you can put out something and get called out for it right it's because 20 minutes later you can put out a new track the ability to put out music is way different than it was back then that's true so like mm-hmm. with the internet, I can put something out and like if it's whack, it's like that's cool. I can then put out another track referencing how whack that was in a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very true. And just run with it. And just run with it. Mm-hmm. And no one is the, no one even cares at that point. Do people no. remember in the Drake uh, Meek Mill beef that Charged Up didn't get the same type of acclaim that Back to Back did? Like he dropped Charged Up, which was a way that he used to like drop. You know, disc records, which was, I'm not going to mention you. I'm just going to rap about a whole bunch of other things in a way that I like to. And people are like, that's cool, but like, that wasn't really any heat. So he's like, okay, three days later, I'm going to drop back to back. And this is the only record that we're going to play in regard to that beef is back to back. Like, how many people referenced that he dropped Charged Up first? I forgot it actually came out. There right. you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, within, like, within well, 24 to 48 hours, I can drop another song and just wipe away. What happened? What came before it? Right. You couldn't do that back and then. If you dropped a track, exactly. like then you'd have to get more studio time. It, was, it wasn't digital. <laughs> right. then. It was just we would stuck do something on there, analog. Right. Yeah, it was, right. Yeah, right. Right. You right. throw it out yeah. there and you just have yeah. to wait. Like I hope it's good. I hope exactly. it's good. Oh, hopefully A and R's got this bad. track. <laughs> hopefully DJs get it and they can play it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like the process of doing that it takes so much longer now that you had to come with heat at the beginning. This like is it true. had to be heat. This is true. Damn. Nowadays you can put out some straight garbage and it's all good. Yeah. Right. And it's also crazy too because like everything on the radio sounds the same. But I was I think I was talking to to Brandon about this earlier. I might have been you, but like there was a point in time where like you had to go to a certain producer for a sound because it was hard to get equipment. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Or like you went to Premier, Pete Rock, or any of those guys. Right who happened to either have the money for equipment or stole it or something. Right. right, right, right <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And you have to go for that sound. Nowadays, I'm pretty sure that like we can hop on YouTube and recreate the sonics of whoever's the hottest producer. Oh, yeah. For sure. Right? Yeah. So we have a, a landscape where people sound the same. 
but does anyone sound like Little Yachty? Like that raps? Yes. In your opinion. Um, You're shaking your head yes. I've heard tracks. Like I said, I couldn't tell you what the track was, but I felt like <laughs> I, I heard some tracks that sound pretty similar. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be... That's like saying... Pretty similar. In the early 2000s, did you know of people who sounded like Wayne? There's people who are going to copy that style, but I think it's the particular voice inflections. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Like the ad-libs that separate a Yachty from the cats that we hear on SoundCloud that aren't Yachty. True. Yeah. And that's very true. What I don't know, it's frustrating because like I try my best to embrace the youth. Yeah. The youth right. them, you know? But I was listening to uh uh radio today and they were just talking about how everything sounds the same. And it was crazy that a radio host would just explicitly say that kind of casually in, in passing. <laughs> like, oh this shit sounds right. the same. I'm not sure who is who is what is what. I'm like, right. damn, but you guys are playing it. And like well, you have right. control. Well, right. I would think but, you have some control. So, you know. <laughs> but yeah, not really. But do people you say work, that every you work time? In radio? Yeah, but they're grouping everyone together. Like yeah. we we're in the culture, so we know like the Yachties. Even though we get older, we're like, oh, I don't know who these people are. But we know the Yachties, you know, we know the the Migos and Rich Mary, so, yeah. But the outer world, they group all that sound into the same sound. Like all that cadence, that's the same cadence. So they have right. no idea True. What's the difference? Right? Like awesome when gangster, guy. like when gangster rap first came out, like when when every time that because right now it sounds like we're on a new verge of a different sound of rap. Right. Like every time there is a new sound and there's different people coming out around the same time, don't people who aren't in the culture like, man, but all that sound the same though. Right. And you're like, no, That's actually, true. they're so this is different than that, right. and these people are different from them. But like people who are on the outside are like, nah. But I feel all like of this is the same. My little cousins could tell me that. Like, they, oh no, he's he's not this, and I'm like, no, it's the same. You know, <laughs> they, they're, they all sound similar to me. You know, but yeah. they break it down. I'm, you know, <laughs> I had those moments. I was driving, and I, I thought I was like, damn, like I get it, because even the ad libs are the same. Even people are copying the cadence of the ad lib. Right, and there's a yeah. point in time where the ad lib was your signature. I was saying, mm-hmm. I thought the yeah. point of an ad lib was to be your own, yours, like, right? Thing. Like right. your, it's your ad lib, right? Not exactly. like the ad lib right. plugin or the right. ad lib, right? right. right. Like, yeah, yeah, sound yeah, pack. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got these. I got hey, from Jeezy, and I got to, you know, just mix them together and get your own. Like that's not. I thought it was. That was the like you said your tagline or whatever. Right. People don't really use them as taglines no more. Like you don't have like a Jada kiss. Okay. <laughs> Or like, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, you know, right, right, like people don't right. use those as ad libs anymore. People just right. say, put like a yeah in a specific area. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. That's true. Like, the last ad lib I heard that was specific, I think, was when uh, uh, Kendrick does his like, do, 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 do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. for sure, like, specifically, that's the sound that he makes for that. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. That's, that's was, true. You know, like, other people don't really have their own specific ad libs. true. I got yeah. fucked up when I heard. Um, uh, Chance the Rapper on No Problem. Mm. We talked about this. Yeah. Because I felt like he was just taking the cadence and riding with it. For sure. Right? I was just like, fuck me, I don't need you to do this. <laughs> right. Well, this shit bangs. Right? right. <laughs> yeah. No I'm Problems. Guilty. I like No Problems. No <laughs> Problems. No. <laughs> if you listen to No Problems, though, like from, from Chance's like perspective, that, sa- that song sounded more like an alley-oop to to Two Chains and Wayne to do their thing. He's just mm-hmm. kind of like on that. You right. know what I'm saying? It right. could be them featuring him but it's his song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's not, he's like doing exactly what you're saying. I'm gonna ride this cadence. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow a, an opportunity for these two individuals who aren't dropping albums right now with the last project that they had came out with, which called college grove together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, to be a part of my audience. You know what I mean? When I'm out here doing my college tours, when I'm out here reaching out to people that are my age and younger, right. Y'all can still be around that, you know what I'm saying? We all come get this money together. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty. Come on, let's go. Exactly. <laughs> Damn, man. That's but it still pisses me off. <laughs> oh, <duh. laughs> like I get it, but I'm still like, nah, man, look, I expect more from you. I didn't like his album, but hearing that, just hearing someone ride the wave so explicitly is is frustrating. Right? Like, do we expect Jay-Z to do that? No. Not even a little He bit. won't. But did he What's ever it? ride a wave? That's I think different. he will a tad, like a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Lincoln with Kanye in the last couple of years, those you know, big tracks that he had. He's good at riding the wave. He's good at like Watch the Throne was definitely culture. him riding the wave, him. For sure. Watch the Throne was Jay Z being like, you know what? I'm gonna tap Kanye real quick and see what they doing mm-hmm. and let me just rap over some of those. Because for a lot of people, I don't know how it is in in like um 
for y'all when y'all heard it, but like when I was in school and we were listening to Watch the Throne, Watch the Throne was Kanye West featuring Jay Z. Like that's how that album sounded to us. Really? Straight up. It was the the beats and the breaks in those beats were what Kanye does. They were very uh, my dark twisted, my beautiful uh-huh. dark twisted fantasy. You know what I'm saying that didn't sound anything like blueprints or anything bef- like right. that he had written before that. True. He was dropping a couple of verses in between, but it didn't sound like his type of music. And since then, what he dropped uh, Magna Carta Holy Grail since then, which still kind of references that the beats in that are still kind of my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. It's very from Watch the Throne. You can tell that the new Kanye had a very large impression on the beats and the way that he makes the music that he did in Watch the Throne was very him riding that wave to me and my peoples. Are the kids going to fuck with it? We understand the the legacy and the legendariness that he is. Know what I mean, like that can never you can never like diss a hoe. He's 47 years old and still in the game. That's confusing to me. Fam. Why? Like, when's the last time you heard a Karras one track? Or, right. you know, like, <laughs> like, like yeah, yeah, Kim yeah. or, or like Victor. Like, yeah. right. like, no one else, else has else done is that. No one else that old and even remotely relevant. No one. That's true. Like, it's, it's amazing, but it's yeah. confusing. Like, I'm, that's, that's why I'm excited for the album. Like, I, wonder, I am too. What, what is this going to sound like? What are you going to talk about? This is going to be amazing. Like, I'm, well, I'm just interested. It could, could be bad, I guess. But I'm interested to see what it is because we've never had this in hip-hop before. Yeah. And that's to me. That's without Beyonce. Like his hype is still right. No, of course, sure. yeah, he would be without. It's regardless of Beyonce, he'd talk- be exactly where he is today if they'd never even met. Like that. Right. That's the, on the strength of hope. I was talking mm-hmm. to a guy about the Snoop album that came out. He's like, "Oh, Snoop album came out." I was like, <laughs> he, "Snoop's been advertising this for like two months. Like, what do you right. mean you didn't know?" I was right. Like, Dang, you know. So it's some of those. You know, he's yeah. trying, but. Jay Z, I mean, he just puts out what four, 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 or whatever the thing right, is. Yeah. And right, this shit comes out. It's like, a whole like <laughs> TMZ, like boom, like what? Are, you know, <laughs> the world. Not, right? What the world the Jay Z is saying things. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he's he's really good at yeah. at making that all about him. He's like, oh, yeah. I just had some babies. Y'all talking about Beyonce and my babies. Now I'm gonna drop the album. The album had to have been finished for time now. We didn't even know yeah. that he was writing it. A new thing that Jay-Z is doing, like, he didn't even grow out his hair. Remember back in the day, you knew a new Hove album was yeah, coming out because right. he wasn't cutting his hair? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, yeah, he didn't even do that this time. It was a little baby Super on the low. I think, <laughs> exactly. I think too, the, the total culture, they, we really realized that Jay-Z is the ultimate, like, rapper. This is how yeah. you should do your whole career. You right. know, so whatever you're doing now, the, the Yachty stuff, whatever, but at the end of the day, the right. Jay Z thing. Mm-hmm. That's what you this need Jay-Z to follow. Thing. <laughs> this is what you need to follow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like if we yeah. want the genre to sustain itself, we need to have old guys that can still do it. Like it's right. one of the only genres of music that has like an expiration date. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like no yeah. other kind of music is like that. Right. You know. So we need we need someone else to follow, or at least rep like mirror that kind of success, like that kind of longevity, in order to maintain the genre as right. a real type of music for okay. sure we need like a hove and a kanye to be 67 years old selling out stadiums running around exactly like the eagles do. right you know i want to see hove like, in that. Yeah. selling out like 65 yeah. 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 that's how we yeah. know rap has made it we'll right. be like yes hove, we in here is, is hotball the, a shot of something shot of first off. songwriter right the uh, first rapper to be in the songwriter hall of fame you know what i'm saying two things came to mind Fact. one of them prodigy was 42 right yeah and he was performing at dre's in Vegas, like mm-hmm. three days before his passing. Mm-hmm. Really? Right? So 42 years old, still able to go out and perform. A massive body of work. Obviously not as important as open. We all can't be hoes. Right. No. But I think they painted enough of a legacy yeah. to have fans rock with them right. in perpetuity. Mm-hmm. Is there anyone, and I'm sure you're going to say no, is there anyone in the in the, the current young wave that we think will will last through that sort of like the barrier? I'm gonna go last. How young? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about right now. So obviously, we'll put the we'll put the folks on the table who we know, like Lil Yachty, Kodak Black. So the oh god. Oh. And I'll, I'm, I don't want to put in like the Migos into that because you know they've, they've almost transcended. But like yeah, out of that. Yeah, they've right? been. They Versace hit that. what 2012. Right. You know right. What I mean, they've exactly. been in the game. Mm-hmm. So we'll take the, the the kids who are important right now, right. So that that would include like Yachty, that would include Kodak, that would include Vert, that would include Twenty One Savage. So do do I, do we think that out who, of that who camp, out of that, if anyone is going to be able to to at forty five? It's the show though. If they can't do a show, I haven't seen everyone perform. I just saw right. Ray Shimmer last night, first time live. Like how was it? They have a show. 
They yeah. have a show. They, they have a show. seem like they, they do, have though. You they know, got energy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Energy is what I really right. mean. I, I, the I, I, energy I, I, is like there. Good time to go see this. And they kind of <laughs> rock. They, they play off each other, but not everybody has that show. So that's, I think, too, where they fall off. They can make the music anytime, you right. know? But when it's kind of like time to get in front of 10,000 people, can you do are it? people vibing, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, are you bringing them? And, like, a lot of artists, they want to say, oh, this is my new song, like, dropping this new... I think Ray Shrimmer did last night. They ended on a new song. And everybody's like standing there, and then their energy just brought everybody up. The song right. was kind of yeah. dead, but right. the energy. So not everybody can do that. You know? I think right. it more depends on like a lot. All the people you named it's too. It's too early to say. It's if they real, can be I was going to say that too. Forty years. From well, now. let's just speculate but, then. You know but I mean, saying? like that's the only <laughs> thing so we can do early. because when when you know country grammar drop was people like yo Nelly's about to be here for the next twenty years. And he's he's hot. He was the star. hottest thing yeah. out. Fam. Yeah. Right. yeah. What's Nelly doing? Didn't just get married or something like that? Like outside. What's the last track? That he did for us. I know he tried to do like some country stuff. Oh, didn't he do something with Tim McGraw or some shit? That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like he's trying to make <laughs> that 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 money. He had a mustard track. Did he? What? Yeah. I didn't hear See, it. See, didn't even know about it. Bam. <laughs> right. Whoops. <laughs> he had exactly. a mustard track that came out. It wasn't all that hot, but because no one cared. Yeah. Well, that's actually a good point. You mentioned mustard being from the West Coast, because a lot of the artists that we're talking about are not from the are not from the West Coast. Like we mm. talk about young kids. Mm. Everybody is not Atlanta's from the West Coast. having a resurgence right now. Yeah, and everybody's from there. Still, is it's there a, anyone from the West? I don't think there is. It, see, but then you would you would talk to like yeah, you would talk to exactly that, you yeah. that young yeah out here. that young. I mean, I you go so. to like RJ and like these young guys. I mean, YJ he's been in the game right now, yeah. so he's already transcended transcended yeah. that. But right. it's a lot of cats out here on the West Coast. Nobody knows about them though. That's true. You know, nobody knows. Shout out Rob Stone, San Diego all day. Right. <laughs> okay, so I don't think Kodak Black is gonna last, man. I. He I, might, I think he's going to get himself in trouble. For sure. I, I was gonna, yeah, yeah I, think, sure. I think he sure. will cut himself short, regardless yeah, sure. of what his music does. I, he's just, yeah. I would he just makes poor that, life decisions. Yeah, I, he does. I feel like if, if he came out with his same cadence with songs that were impactful, so he still sounds like Kodak Black, which is what's working for him, but he maybe had a ghostwriter, or like, was like all right, guys, let's, <laughs> let's fucking champ up let's and make a, a meaningful song with some Tunnel vision. words in it. He would lose fans. Was actually <laughs> His fans will, will leave. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, impactful? But no, this not, is not what I came here for. Not, <laughs> but it can be impactful in his own way. True. Right? Yeah, it can true. still be his story, but just in a way that like forces the people who have already given him cosigns, like the bloggers and like the hype beasts, like right. Kodak Black, for his audience that have already given him a blessing to say, have you guys heard this new Kodak Black? This shit's crazy, right? So they've already they're already fucking with him because of his vibe. But now that he's like Lil Wayne, yeah. Lil Wayne came right. through and he was always Wayne. Right. But one day he's like, I'm the Carter, I'm the next guy, and his whole thing just switched. Yeah. Well, he started rapping better when he decided like to change his persona. Like his persona changed when his skill level improved. Right. Or reverse. Or, or well, he decided that I'm going to they make were, this they, change. Yeah. Around the mm-hmm. same time, they kind of you know. Happened. I'm the best rapper alive. Carter 2, this is it. Now, yeah, you're old right. boy's gone, this is me. You're right. Go yeah, DJ, yeah. we ain't here. Yeah. Best podcast ever. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, motherfucker? <laughs> hey, but I think Wayne started singing more when he became the Carter, though. You think so on 1 and 2? I know, definitely. Because, I mean, his younger days, he wasn't singing as much, you no. know? And a lot of singing songs. I think he had a country a country song on one of them. I mean, it's kind of, isn't that when the harmonizer and hip-hop started to come in? Yeah. Because, like, as funny as it to me, I also was funny that, like, 50 uh, got on Ja for all his harmonizing and singing. And once he was dispatched with him, he did <laughs> right. the exact same kind of music. Because he yeah. saw <laughs> he saw, yeah, he saw like, how hey, important that was. That terrible. Is, he get saw how here. important, like, to sing these bars <laughs> exactly. to and get these checks. Straight up. He saw how important that was, though. The rapper, and then they could sing their chorus. Yeah. Same thing with Drake. They, you know, fifty like on there. I feel right. like yeah. I, feel I don't like have that's... to reach out to one twelve or Casey and Jojo to sing my hook. I can do it. I can keep all of this with me. I'll just kind of hold straight up. Bet. That's more money. Right. <laughs> but I mean, like, mm-hmm. like Pac used to harmonize some of his hooks back in the day. This is true. I think that's something wrong with it. I don't think that's an issue. No, nah. that's mm. not a problem. No. no. I just, I just always thought it was <laughs> ironic that like that was his like focal point of what he went at job at four. And as soon as he had destroyed his career, he made the exact kind of music he was. So he just likes fighting people. Well, he's really good at it. now. He's just a troll because nobody wants the problem. Yeah, like, nobody will. No, like, well, like, well, engage. No. I understand. Right. That you <laughs> like, no, nah, I mean, I saw what happened. It's fine. Right. Yeah, Viv, gonna, you're right. I suck. Okay, I'm not gonna, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna do any of this. Well, 
We have a light that just fell down. I was gonna say that. <laughs> but okay, so here's the funny part about that. That's actually not the light that we thought would fall. Nice. That's we thought very it was true. Be that light, right? And as I was taping that oh, light shit, down, I just saw oh, it. oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spider Man. Yeah, okay. I was like, look, it's gonna stay. So I'm taping that shit down earlier. I'm like, this is when it's gonna fall. It actually doesn't affect the light, man. No, no. Right, See, well, look, a lot of duct tape. it's still rolling. Yeah, we, we good. We are. <laughs> Episode one. We we in here, right? Oh my God.